beside partner, it's my day. Good evening. Welcome to the Avalon Theater and this performance featuring the Glenn Miller Orchestra. My name is Eric Stabnow and I'm the orchestra's music director and I'll be your host this evening. Now we've prepared a program that will include all of Glenn Miller's biggest hits, a few of his lesser known songs, and some additional music from the big band era that's just slightly outside of Glenn Miller's library. Now I'm certain that many of you will have recognized our opening song and theme song, Moonlight Serenade, which was composed and arranged by Glenn Miller in 1939. And that was followed by an up-tempo number. Well, it really is a number actually because that next song has no title. We just call it 705. And then we finish that opening set with a big hit for the band called Chattanooga Choo Choo. Now, Chattanooga was composed and arranged by the writing team of Mac Gordon and Harry Warren for the 1941 film Sun Valley Serenade. That was one of two films that featured Glenn Miller and his orchestra. And the song was a big hit. It went all the way to number one on the charts, and it holds a special place in music history. You see, it became so popular that within a year of its release, by February of 1942, it had sold 1.2 million copies and in recognition of breaking one million sales, Glenn Miller and his orchestra were awarded the very first gold record. That song really has quite an impressive resume for the group. It was also nominated for the Academy Award for Best Original Song in 1941. And the original version of Chattanooga Choo Choo featured Glenn Miller's vocal group, The Four Modern Airs, and our version featured our own vocal group, which we call the Moonlight Serenaders. And that includes our vocalist, Jenny Swoish, who will be back a bit later to sing a few songs on her own. And that also featured a few gentlemen from the band singing great backup harmonies. And you'll hear more of the Moonlight Serenaders as well this evening. And we do have a lot of great music planned. 
But before we continue, I'd like to take a moment to recognize some of these great musicians that you've heard so far. And this is a fantastic group of musicians, and these folks come from all across the country. And uh, as with any swing group or any dance band, it's vital to have a great rhythm section, and I would like to recognize those gentlemen first. You heard a piano player from Grand Island, Nebraska, Ron Mills. And our bass player from Portland, Oregon, Louie Leaguer. And our drummer from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, how about it for Dean Schweiger. A lot of big Philadelphia fans out there, huh? Well, you also heard several great soloists, uh, several great horn players playing solos. A gentleman in the back uh, from New York City on the trumpet, that's Jeff Wilfor. And our baritone saxophonist, he's also from New York City, Saul Douch. Now the sound of this orchestra is characterized by the sound of the reed section led by the clarinet, and we have a fantastic lead clarinetist and lead alto saxophonist. He's from Tinley Park, Illinois. How about it for Kevin Sheehan? A lot of love for Tinley Park, Illinois as well, I see. All right. Uh, well, we're going to move on to a vocal song that was a big hit in 1939. This one spent nine weeks atop the charts. It's called Stairway to the Stars.
That was Stairway to the Stars, and you acknowledged our saxophone soloist there from Cleveland, Ohio, John Orsini. And our lead trombonist, he's from Anchorage, Alaska, that's George Reinert. Now, Glenn Miller was, without a doubt, one of the most popular and influential musicians of his time. Here we are, it's 80 years later, and we're still performing the same music on a nightly basis. And a lot of those records that Glenn set in the 1930s and 1940s, those are still intact to this day. Even with a relatively short commercial career, Glenn was able to chart 59 top 10 records, with 17 of those reaching number one. And we're going to perform several of those top 10 and number one hits this evening, including this next song, A String of Pearls. That was a string of pearls, and of course that featured our saxophone section playing the melody and several soloists from the saxophone section. You've met many of these folks, but I'll introduce them all. Now this gentleman was playing the alto saxophone, of course, on that solo, though he's normally our baritone saxophone player. Once again, Saul Douch. And once again, next to Saul, that's John Orsini. 
And also soloing on the alto saxophone, you heard from Orlando, Florida, Tammy Danielson. Now, now let me ask, uh, I'm guessing many of you are familiar with that original recording, is that right? Because you acknowledged our, our trumpet soloist there, he was recreating a, a famous solo from the original recording, played on the cornet by Bobby Hackett. Now, Bobby Hackett was a very talented musician. He played uh, guitar with Glenn Miller's orchestra, and of course was a fantastic cornet player as well. And he played this very beautiful solo that's really quite challenging to recreate. And you heard it done so easily by, from Chicago, Illinois, Chris Stein. Well, Glenn Miller's, or uh, Glenn Miller's orchestra is equally known for its instrumental music and its vocal music, and we're delighted to invite a fantastic singer to the stage in just a moment. And for this next vocal song, we're going to step away from Glenn Miller's library and instead perform a piece that was first made popular by Ella Fitzgerald, and that was back in her early days singing with Chick Webb's orchestra. The song is A Tisket, A Tasket, and to sing it for you in just a moment from Nashville, Tennessee, Jenny Swoish. Just 
Thank you. Tammy Danielson, everyone. And how about it for Jenny Swoish? And Jenny will be back later to sing a few more songs on her own once again and to join our vocal group. But in the meantime, here's another instrumental that was a big hit for the orchestra. And since we already featured the saxophone section, what do you say we feature the trombone section on this one? Now, if you watch the trombones throughout the concert, you'll see them use a variety of mutes. There's uh, the straight mute. There's the cup mute. They even have these little derby hat mutes up front. But on this particular song, you'll have a chance to hear the sound of the toilet plunger mute. <laughs> this one's Tuxedo Junction. the trumpets okay? <laughs> and how about it for this trombone section? I'd like to introduce these gentlemen all one at a time for you. You've already met our lead player from Anchorage, Alaska, George Reinert. 
Next to George here, a gentleman from Phoenix, Arizona, Hayden Maple. A gentleman from Chicago, Illinois, Bryant Scott. Got some big Chicago fans out there. All right, good to know. And our bass trombone player, he's from Warren, Maine. That's Jason Bennett. Well, uh, as I was saying, we are going to feature several sections in this orchestra throughout the concert, and of course, individual soloists as well. And you have heard the reed section playing what we call the Glenn Miller reed sound, of course, on Moonlight Serenade. That's really the sound that this orchestra was known for, was that reed section, and it's often performed on ballads and slower songs. Oftentimes, a vocal chart uh, will have the melody first introduced by the reed section. Uh, the saxophones will stand up and play it before the, the singer comes in. But we're going to instead uh, step away from Glenn Miller's book and play uh, a very uh, intricate and, and challenging clarinet piece that was first, uh, first featured Benny Goodman. We're going to step into uh, his book for a moment here and play a song that's called Benny Rides Again, and we're going to feature our lead clarinetist, Kevin Sheehan.
That was Benny Rides again, and how about it for Kevin Sheehan? <laughs> Up next is another vocal group song that originally featured the Four Modern Airs. Now, the Four Modern Airs were formed in Buffalo, New York in the 1930s, and upstate New York is very near and dear to my heart. I'm from Rochester, which is just about an hour down the road from there. And uh, the Four Modern Airs got their start by singing with local, um, local and regional swing bands and dance bands. But their big break came when they were selected to, uh, to record the theme song to a popular radio program of that time called Make Believe Ballroom. And then they met Glenn Miller when they recorded a sequel to that theme called It's Make Believe Ballroom Time. Well, Glenn loved the sound of the Modern Airs and he hired them on the band and they were an instant hit. Uh, charting 10, uh, 10, 10 songs on the chart uh, in the year 1941 alone. And that includes this next song, Perfidia. Perfidia, once again featuring our vocal group, 
And uh, we're going to invite Jenny back up for another vocal song after this. And this one was arranged by a gentleman named Nelson Riddle. Now, is anyone familiar out there with Nelson Riddle's writing? <laughs> chances are, yep. Chances are you've, you've probably heard him. Uh, he arranged uh, in the 1950s and beyond uh, for singers like Frank Sinatra and really uh, was a tremendous composer and arranger. And uh, like all writers, he had certain sounds that he liked. We've mentioned the Glenn Miller Reed sound. If you know about any of Glenn Miller's other writers like Jerry Gray, or Bill Finnegan, or Billy May, they all have a very distinct and recognizable sound. And one thing about Nelson Riddle's music is that he loved the sound of the low instruments. He loved especially the Barry Sax bass clarinet combo and the bass trombone. And we have a phenomenal bass trombone player that you're gonna have a chance to hear on this next song. Uh, he's uh, got some great exposed parts there and uh, it sounds phenomenal in this room too. I know you're gonna love it. Once again, this is going to feature Jenny Swoish it's called Love Me or Leave Me. Jason Bennett, everybody. And once again, Jenny Swoish. Uh, we have just one more song before there's going to be a short 15 minute intermission. And at that time, a few gentlemen from the band, Joe Young and Chris Stein, will make their way to the lobby. Um, and there will be some items. There's some t-shirts, there are CDs, and there's a DVD. Now those CDs include two studio albums and one live album. And those include a lot of the music that we've performed tonight. That's all of Glenn Miller's big hits and, and some other songs on there as well. And a DVD was just recently released. It was a 2017 performance that this orchestra had uh, in Japan. And the band has been going to Japan every year for decades and decades and decades. 
and we play all across the country in uh, a variety of performance spaces. And this particular DVD was recorded in downtown Tokyo. Uh, actually, Tokyo is all downtown. <laughs> uh, a beautiful concert hall called Orchard Hall. And uh, it's really a phenomenal performance by the band. Uh, it's a beautiful space uh, to see visually. Uh, the sound is great. Uh, the music is great. Uh, what, what more can I say? It's, it's solid gold and it'll bring you good luck. You're gonna wanna get that DVD. You wanna go right out there and speak with Joe Young about that. Um, and they'll have some other items available. So if you like what you hear on stage, uh, then speak with these gentlemen during the intermission. Now, uh, a little bit more about Glenn Miller's history. Oftentimes you can split his career into sort of two sections, what we call the civilian band and the military band. If you know a little bit about his career, you know what I'm talking about. And the civilian band was around from 1938 to 1942. And that group is responsible for most of the music you're probably familiar with. Songs like Moonlight Serenade, In the Mood, Chattanooga Choo Choo, and so forth. But in 1942, Glenn left his, uh, his civilian band behind to join the war effort, where he was selected to be the head of bands in the Army Air Forces. And then over the next two years, he led those bands at performances all across, all across Europe and was really a tremendous morale builder to those fighting in the European theater. Now you may know that in December of 1944, Glenn went missing when his flight disappeared over the English Channel. But in the years following World War II, the Glenn Miller Orchestra was reformed, uh, was first reformed under the direction of his tenor saxophone player, Tex Beneke. Anyone know Tex Beneke? You know that name? He was really a great tenor soloist and he sang a few songs with the band like Chattanooga Choo Choo. Uh, I'm essentially playing the role of, of Tex Beneke tonight, if you will, uh, in front of the orchestra. And uh, later on, the group was, uh, was led by a gentleman named Ray McKinley, who played drums in the group. And that particular iteration with Ray McKinley was restarted in 1956. And wouldn't you believe that besides a few months off the road last year due to the pandemic, this band has been touring nonstop ever since 1956. And uh, because of Glenn's association with the military, there's been a long tradition on the band of dedicating a song to the veterans. And in fact, we would love to recognize any veterans in the audience this evening. So perhaps at this time, if we can turn up the house lights just a bit so that we can see one another, we would love for any veterans in the audience to stand if you're able or raise your hand so that we can recognize and honor you. Thank you, veterans. All right, veterans, this one's for you. Glenn's American Patrol.
All right, we'll see you in about 15 minutes.
That was Little Brown Jug, and you heard on the tenor saxophone, John Orsini. <laughs> on the trumpet, Joe Young. <laughs> and how about it for our lead trombone player, George Reinert. <laughs> now that song was central to the plot of a film called The Glenn Miller Story. Has anyone seen The Glenn Miller Story? That's a fun movie that's a, a 1954 film starring Jimmy Stewart as Glenn Miller, of course, and June Allison as his wife, Helen. And throughout the film, uh, June Allison as Hel Helen Miller repeatedly asks Glenn, hey, can you play my favorite song, Little Brown Jug? And of course, Jimmy Stewart as Glenn Miller won't play it. He says, no, no, Helen, doggone it. No, we're not playing that song. He said something to that effect. Anyways, you get the point. Well, in the film, that song was first performed in 1944 to honor Glenn Miller uh, following his disappearance, but in reality, it was one of the orchestra's first big hits from 1939. And that was really an important year for the orchestra. As I mentioned, they were formed in 1938, uh, but a lot of their, their big hits really started coming in 1939, including Little Brown Jug. Of course, uh, the theme song, Moonlight Serenade, in the Mood and many others, and a lot of those uh, famous instrumentals that the band is known for. So up next we have another instrumental, and this one gets its title from the phone number to the Hotel Pennsylvania in New York City. I guess I don't need to tell you any more than that, you know what's coming next. Well, if you know the lyrics, then sing along, and if you don't know the lyrics, you'll catch on quickly.
That was Pennsylvania 65,000. And you heard a gentleman on the trumpet. And before this concert, uh, well, I should preface by saying uh, gentlemen and, and ladies in this band have all been in the group for varying amounts of time. It could be for a couple months, a couple years, a couple decades. And some come and go and return and so forth. And this gentleman on trumpet told me uh, that 30 years ago today, he played his very first Glenn Miller Orchestra show. That's, uh, that's Jeff Wilford back there on the trumpet. And uh, next we're going to invite Jenny Swoish back to the stage to uh, sing another song. This comes from the film Sun Valley Serenade. This was originally the A-side on the record where Chattanooga Choo Choo was the B-side. This is called I Know Why and So Do You.
let my feet do things they should do. You know what? You're lovely, and so what? You're lovely, but oh, what you do to me? I'm like an ocean wave that's bumped on the shore. I feel so absolutely stumped on the floor. When you dance, you're charming and you're gentle. But this feeling isn't purely mental For heaven rest us I'm not as fast as And that's why I won't dance Why should I? I won't dance No, how could I? I won't dance Man, save a fool for Jenny Swipes, isn't she great? We're gonna keep Jenny up here for just a moment to, uh, to play another song or to sing another song with our, our vocal group, the Moonlight Serenaders. Now I've mentioned the names of uh, several of the gentlemen who wrote the music and arranged the music for this band. There was of course Glenn Miller, uh, Jerry Gray, Bill Finnegan, Matt Gordon and Harry Warren. A uh, host of names there, and some of those gentlemen functioned as the composer, meaning they wrote new and original music and lyrics for this band. And some functioned as the arranger, meaning that they took a pre-existing tune and adapted it for this particular instrumentation. And some did both. And in just a matter of a few short years, those gentlemen produced hundreds of uh, arrangements and compositions for the band. And with new additions over time, the numbering system in our library catalog now goes up to almost 1,500. And you can see some of the music on our stands here. That's not all of it. Uh, but all of this music is numbered. And I mentioned that our second song, we call 705. So you can guess what number that one is in the library. And uh, after you spend enough time on a band like it becomes easier to refer to songs by their number instead of by their uh, actual title. So for example, uh, if I say number one, that means Moonlight Serenade. If I say number five, that means A String of Pearls. And I'll segue that. Uh, has anyone here ever seen The Johnny Carson Show? You familiar with Johnny Carson, The Tonight Show? He had a segment called Stump the Band. You remember that one? And 
audience would yell something out and the band would have to play it. Well, we're going to try a numbering system. So I haven't told them about this. I'm just going to yell out a number and uh, we'll see if these guys know what it is, okay? Uh, 31. Stardust. Uh, 132. 70. Mangoes, all right. How about it for the Glenn Miller Orchestra? And Vanna White. And Jenny is our Vanna White for the evening. All right, well, we're going to continue next with a song that we call 171, but you might know it better as Don't Sit Under the Apple Tree with anyone else but me. Just got word from a guy who heard from the guy next door to me. The girl he met just loves to pet and he fits you to a T. So don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me till I come marching. Swoish in the Moonlight Serenaders. And don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. So there's one song in particular that Glenn Miller is remembered for more than any other. It never made it all the way to number one on the charts, but in many ways has become the theme song of the big band era. Let's see if you recognize it.
There was John Orsini on the saxophone. Chris Stein on the trumpet. And hitting the high note at the end, our lead trumpet player, Ashley Hall. The Glenn Miller Orchestra. draws to a close, we've come to our theme song, which means it's time for us to say goodnight. Once again, I'd like to recognize all the musicians in the band, the Moonlight Serenaders and our vocalist, Jenny Swoish. We had a wonderful time in our return here to the Avalon Theater. We hope you have a lovely night, and we'll see you next time. everybody. Do you want to hear one more?
Orchestra.